Bam! The Detroit Lions. They are a top two team in the National Football League right now. There's nobody in the NFC that we can look at and say is better than the Detroit Lions. Defense, obviously, how are they going to be able to perform without Aiden Hutchinson? Great. We talked about the offense being unbelievable and so much fun to watch. Now the special teams with Coach Fipp and the boys are becoming dominant. This Lions team, it'd be hard if I was a Lions fan not to just assume we're winning. This is a team that understands who they are. Uh, They can go on the road and play. They can play at home. They're the hottest team in football right now. It is official. The Detroit Lions are the best team in the NFL. This season, they entered with lofty expectations, and not only have they lived up to the hype, they have absolutely crushed it. Week by week, they're not just beating their opponents, they are hammering them and humiliating them, testing out new ways to score touchdowns, or hell, even seeing how many offensive linemen they can get to touch the ball. It is a combination of skill, coaching, and sheer physicality that is beating the rest of the NFL into submission. I mean, there is surely only one end result a Super Bowl. And in today's video, we are going to uncover why the Detroit Lions are the most dangerous team in the NFL. Are you looking for a new book this football season? BetUS is the answer. They have the fastest and easiest payouts in the industry, along with 24-7 personalized service, 365 days a year. Not only that, but they have live wagering on all major games, so if you see something mid-game and want to make a wager on it, you can. And the best part is you get 10% back on your net losses twice a year. And now look, you guys knew I had to come through with you guys for a promo code. So make sure that you guys are using code YouTube150 for a nice 150% deposit bonus on up to $2,000. That's right. We were doing 125%, but we said, screw that. We're giving you guys 150% instead. Again, that is promo code YouTube150 for a 150% deposit bonus on up to $2,000. Again, thank you to BetUS for sponsoring today video, but for now, let's hop back into it. Now in the last four games, the Detroit Lions have put up 42 points on the Seahawks, 47 on the Dallas Cowboys, 31 on the Minnesota Vikings, and now 52 points on the Tennessee Titans. And safe to say, that is one hell of a run, and it's not against bad defenses either. The most recent victory over the Titans, in which they scored their season-high 52 points, came against a defense that has conceded the fewest yards in the NFL. One week earlier, Jared Goff completed 88% of his passes for 280 yards and two touchdowns touchdowns against the Minnesota Vikings defense that has been confusing some of the league's best quarterbacks. But I mean, it doesn't matter who they're facing, the Lions offense is dominant. They're averaging the six most yards per game with 156.7 and are only outside of the top 10 in passing yards because they simply haven't needed to utilize that aspect of their offense that often. This is proven by the fact that Goff's 74.1% completion rate leads the entire NFL and their 8.9 yards per pass is tied at the top with Baltimore. I mean, there's no two ways around it. Detroit is still dominant through the air, even if the total yardage stats aren't really there to back it up. And I mean, if they weren't just easing their way into so many victories, Goff's arm would be utilized more and they would easily be inside of the top 10 for passing and rushing yards, respectively. I mean, they're excelling at everything they put their mind to and their reward is a league leading 33.4 points per game. As things stand right now, it is a level of dominance that suggests that the 2024 Detroit Lions are ready to make up for the disappointing end to the 2023 season. And look, not just by reaching the Super Bowl, but winning the whole damn thing. And I think no win sums up just how dominant this Detroit Lions team is more than this week's victory over Tennessee. The team racked up 52 total points with Jared Goff only contributing 85 yards through the air. And now, of course, the king of efficiency notched three touchdown passes from that minimal production, showcasing just how easy life is for Detroit at the moment. I mean, this is even more emphasized further by their game against Dallas two weeks ago in which they enjoyed a healthy 47-9 victory and spent half of the game experimenting with different ways to get their offensive linemen the ball. And now look, I think it's safe to say that everyone watching the Detroit Lions knows that they are a Super Bowl caliber team. The Detroit Lions know that they are a Super Bowl caliber team. I mean, hell, at this point, it kind of just seems that they're kind of just screwing around until the postseason shows up and they actually have to start playing some real football in Smash Mouth and just honestly dominating the teams that they're going to play in January. I mean, Jared Goff is rightly receiving buzz in the MVP race and should be the favorite at this point in the season. We've already spoken about his league-leading completion percentage of 74.1%, which has produced 1,695 passing yards, 13 touchdowns, and four interceptions. He started the season much less convincingly, throwing those four interceptions across his first three weeks, but has been essentially perfect ever since, throwing 10 touchdowns and zero interceptions in his last four games. During this stretch, he hasn't posted a passer rating below 129.9, which averages out to a rating of 115.3 on the year, comfortably his best if the season were to end today. Goff obviously does 
does benefit from just being in such an incredible system, but I mean, you gotta give the guy credit for just being able to just navigate this offense so damn well too. I mean, the dude is making the right decisions, he's pinpoint accurate, and I mean, he has been absolutely unfazed and dominant when under pressure. Entering week eight, he was averaging a league high 11.6 yards per attempt when under pressure with no other quarterbacks averaging over nine. That ability to perform with pressure in his face always used to be Jared Goff's Achilles heel, but now that he seems to have that under control, how the hell on earth do you expect to stop this offense? Their O-line is one of the best in the NFL, their running back duo is the best in the NFL, and their receiving core has a game-breaking answer to every single problem that a defense gives them. I mean, hell, even their special teams has been elite with Khalif Raymond delivering a stunning 90-yard punt return for touchdown against Tennessee this week. And don't worry, we're gonna get to the defense shortly, but this offense alone is an insanely well-rounded unit that can beat you in multiple ways. I mean, every single player is executing their role perfectly and able to do so because of their genius offensive mastermind, Ben Johnson. Johnson returned for one more year to try and help the Lions get across the line after receiving plenty of head coaching interest last year. And look, I mean, frankly, I think he is a lock to pick up whatever head coaching position he wants at the conclusion of this season. But I mean, he's got this offense humming, regularly scheming his various playmakers open, celebrating the strengths of his versatile running back stable in maximizing the talent of his offensive line. And I mean, safe to say, as we've all seen, Detroit's running game has been the engine of this team so far. Like as crazy as it sounds, Jameer Gibbs and David Montgomery are pretty much splitting carries identically, and both of them have been dominating at the same rate too. Gibbs is averaging 6.4 yards per run with 591 yards and six touchdowns, while Montgomery handles more of the short yardage situations, still churning out a 4.5 yards per carry for his 415 yards and seven touchdowns on the ground. With those two proving so unstoppable, Stoppable, there's less pressure on the passing offense, but you can be dead sure that they will deliver when called upon. Do you think you guys are the best running back tandem in the league right now? I mean, it's no disrespect to nobody else, yeah, yeah. but I think like we don't want to be the best running back duo in the league. We want to be the best running back duo to ever do it. And we got to hold ourselves to a different standard in order for us to even get close to that. Amon Rossi Brown leads the team with 408 yards and five touchdowns, continuing as one of the league's very best chain movers. Then, I mean, at the other end of the spectrum, you have Jamison Williams, who has finally broken out in his third season, totaling the second most receiving yards on the team this year with 361 yards and three touchdowns. With St. Brown averaging 10 yards per reception and Jamison Williams averaging 21.2 yards per reception, yes, that's right. The Lions have the perfect complementary partnership in the wide receiver room just as they do in the running back room. And I mean, look, when you add in Sam Laporta as one of the league's most exciting up and coming tight ends, Tim Patrick as a useful third option, and Khalif Raymond who can pop up with a big play from time to time as well, you have a truly terrifying passing offense. I mean, the craziest part too is I haven't even mentioned the utilization of Gibbs and Montgomery as receivers with both going over 130 yards on the season so far. I mean, all in all though, it's just laughable how this offense can expose any defense in so many different ways. Like, I mean, everybody knows they want to run the ball, but that total of 156.7 yards per game running the ball just shows that they cannot be stopped despite teams knowing what they want to do. Oh, and then when they want to pass it or they have to pass it, I guess, they can do that just as well. Like, I mean, the offensive output that they have makes them already Super Bowl contenders, but then when you factor in the defensive improvements that they've made as well, this just makes them the clear-cut winner or just the clear-cut choice to pick in the NFC to win the NFC, as I should say. Like, as we spoke earlier about how good they're just rushing offense was, they're just as capable on the opposite side of the ball on defense to stop the other team from running the ball because their rushing defense has been awesome this year. Elaine McNeil, DJ Reader and company have been dominating in the trenches, limiting opposing rushing attacks to just 101.9 yards per game, which is fifth best in the NFL. This lack of production on the ground is forcing opponents to rely on the pass against Detroit, which plays perfectly into the Lions' aggressive mentality. Despite giving up yards through the air, they have made up for it by regularly making games game-changing plays tied for second for interceptions with 10. This is largely thanks to safeties Kirby Joseph and Brian Branch taking huge steps forward this year with each player contributing five and four interceptions respectively. In total though, the Lions are averaging 2.1 takeaways per game, which is second best in the NFL, leading the team to have a very best turnover margin in the NFL this year. And I mean, that's just a recipe for success. They are a well-coached,
coached an aggressive unit that gladly feeds off the mindset of their head coach, consistently sniffing out opportunities and making their opponents pay. And now look, yes, you might be able to pick up some yards through the air against this unit, but if you're even slightly wayward or sloppy, these defensive backs only need one invitation to make a play as evidenced by this weekend's game. The only reason Jared Goff had such minimal production was because this opportunistic defense kept gifting them short fields. The Titans first drive of the day resulted in an interception that gave Goff the ball just outside the red zone before a second interception gifted them another easy opportunity from the Tennessee 12 yard line. Both interceptions turned into seven points, putting the Lions out of reach before the game had really even started. And now of course, yes, the biggest challenge for Detroit moving forward is going to be the absence of Aiden Hutchinson, who was lost for the season after breaking his leg in week six. And obviously all the players out to give him a dab. See Michael Parsons there and just the emotion. I mean, they, this is one of the leaders of the Lions, former second overall pick, just plays so hard every play, led the league in sacks from Plymouth, Michigan. He's one of their own, and I got to tell you, Tommy, it's just awful to watch. Yeah, heartbreaking to watch and see. And His seven and a half sacks comfortably led the team and still place him third in the entire NFL, despite having played two fewer games than everyone else in the top five. The next best effort on the Lions roster is Aleem McNeil with two and a half, followed by two linebackers, Malcolm Rodriguez and Trevor Nowowski with two apiece. And I mean, it sucks that it did happen because I really do think Hutchinson was on track for a defensive player of the year award winning season, wrecking offensive game plans from the defensive end position. Like the dude was just absolutely dominating this year. And I mean, loss hurts even more considering the team had already lost Marcus Davenport for the year during the early stages of the season. And now look, I know that the Lions were really never in doubt, like they were going to beat the Tennessee Titans the entire time. We all knew that that was going to happen, but it's kind of not scary to know, but at least we got to keep our eye on it because they were only able to get one sack that entire game against that horrible Tennessee offensive line. Like if they can't get a sack against that offensive line, they're not really going to be able to generate pressure by just rushing four for the rest of the season against the tougher opponents that they may have to play, especially in the NFC North that has just become an absolute bloodbath. And now look, before you jump in the comment section and remind me about how they got four sacks against the Vikings two weeks prior with that being the first game that Hutch was out, I totally do understand that, but I still do fully expect this team to make a move before the trade deadline. And I honestly, get an edge rusher, maybe they could still trade for Max Crosby too. That would be a blockbuster trade because then next year when you have Hutch and Crosby coming off the edge if they resign him, that would be absolutely insane. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, could be. Yeah, could be. <laughs> All right. Like, I mean, the Lions do have the fifth most cap space available this season with just over $27 million to spend. So as I said, I would be shocked if we don't see them spend some of that cash on a pass rusher as they hunt down the elusive Lombardi trophy. I mean, frankly, I just don't see a world where they don't try and go get another edge rusher with all of that cap space they have and just the trade deadline coming up too. And as crazy as it sounds too, even without Hutch or just that premier edge rusher, they still look like the most well-rounded and best team in the NFC, bar none, hands down. And if they are able to bring in somebody like Max Crosby or just that premier edge rusher while Hutch is out, who, if they do make it to the Super Bowl, apparently can come back. I don't know. Let me know in the comment section if that is true. I mean, I don't know why they wouldn't be even heavier favorites than to win the Super Bowl if they went out and got a premier pass rusher like that. And not only that too, would they become heavy favorites, but it would just lighten the load and make being a defensive back for them so much easier, just knowing that they have a guy that can get to the quarterback in a just snap of a second. Nonetheless, though, when the stars align in the way that they are for Detroit this year, you have to make the most of it. I mean, just look at the 49ers who missed out last year and are now struggling with injuries and facing an uphill task to make the most of their loaded roster. You never know what the future holds, so the Lions need to do everything they possibly can this year to get the job done. Like, I mean, look, they are six and one right now. A playoff berth is pretty much almost guaranteed at this point, unless they have like a crazy collapse. And yes, they do have a narrow lead over the other teams in the NFC North, but I mean, they have also huge advantages over those other teams inside of the division. Green Bay could be well without Jordan Love for the next few weeks, including the Packers upcoming clash against the Lions in week nine. Further down the division table, the Lions are only one game ahead of the Minnesota Vikings, but do enjoy the tiebreaker over them as things stand. Meanwhile, Chicago, who is at the bottom, looked like a much less daunting opponent when going up against a good Washington inside this weekend. But as I said, this is the Lions division two win, likely giving them the first seed in the NFC and a huge advantage heading into the Super Bowl. And I think it's for that reason that general manager Brad Holmes needs to pick up the phone and bolt
bolster his defensive line. The talent is there at each of their other defensive position groups and their loaded offensive mastermind behind Ben Johnson is easily the best in the NFL right now. 2024 is the year of the Detroit Lions who are officially the most dangerous team in the NFL. But I want to know what you guys think. Do you think they can get the job done this year and win the Super Bowl? Honestly, I don't like, how do you not want the Lions to win if you don't want them to win? Like for me, I want to see Lions versus Chiefs. That would just be the best thing ever. I mean, Dan Campbell against Patrick Mahomes, it would be electric. And I mean, I, I don't know who would win. It would just be an awesome game. Let me know down in the comment section what you guys want to see or how well do you think the Lions will do? Will they have another Dan Campbell mistake and lose again on that fourth down that they didn't convert? Or will they get the job done and get to the Super Bowl this year, which no Lions team has ever done? Let me know in the comment section below. As always, if you did enjoy the content, make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe. Let's me know to keep doing more of these. And as always, I will catch you guys in the next one.